Hello, and welcome to my second edition of N Particles in Autodesk Maya 2009. Now, I'm just going to recommend that you click Watch in High Quality below the YouTube video here. Um, that'll allow you to see what I'm clicking on and what I'm selecting a lot easier. So, anyway, to get started, we're just going to create like a scene of basically a snowstorm or hail, whatever you prefer. And to start off, we're just going to drag a simple plane onto the grid and you can resize that on a center mine by changing the translate options and make it an exact square now you don't have to, whatever your scene prefers and now I'm just gonna hit the 5 key to shade that alright now we're done doing that, we're just gonna drag it up above the grid here and it should be good enough Alright, the next step is to go up to your tool set here and click End Dynamics. Remember, not Dynamics. Alright, now you have that selected. We're going to go up to End Particles and we're going to drag this toolbar out here. Alright, so now you have your um, plane selected here. And make sure you have Balls selected as well. We're not working with any of the other ones because Balls is probably m more proper for um, Hailstone, Snow, whatever you want to do. So now we're going to create emit from object. All right. So now watch what happens when you click play. You notice the balls are emitting from the four corners of the object. Now, in order to pre prevent prevent that from happening, um, go to the end of your time slider and click on emitter type and change it to surface. All right. Now, watch what happens when you click play again. All right. Notice they're emitting from everywhere, which is pretty much more realistic. But in order to increase the animation, we're going to change the option here, the time slider option, and we're going to make it about a thousand. All right. Now watch what happens. All right, that's pretty good. It's pretty neat. All right. Now you notice that. All right. Notice that all the balls are colored. Now if you don't want that, you want them to look more like hailstones, which are white. So what we're gonna do is click on them, X out of this for now, and we're gonna go to sh sorry, shading right right down here. It's one of the tabs. Right underneath the mission attributes. Shading. So now we're gonna scroll down and notice under color we have it set for randomized ID. Now, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click this, and we're going to go, we're going to X out of the blue color, and now we're going to have a solid red color. You notice it changed on here. And you can click on here and select white, and now they look more like hailstones. So that's a way you can change your end particle color. Um, now, I'm sure you're going to have objects in your scene, so we're going to create just a simple box. Now, objects with more resolution will take a longer time to render, and it may slow the hailstone animation down a bit. So, notice when you click play that the objects are going right through, the hailstones are going right through the object. So, in order to prevent that, we're going to go up to top and mesh, create passive collider. Alright, now, watch what happens. Let me play that again. Balls are bounce, hailstones are bouncing off pretty nicely. It's pretty neat. All right, now you can actually change the bounce and the friction of the hailstones. Say when they land on the object here. All right, in order to change that, you're gonna click on the hailstones here. We're gonna put this away, and we're gonna go to collisions. All right, under collisions, you can change the bounce friction and stickiness of the hailstones. So if you make it a bigger bounce, let's say 10, watch what happens when I click play. Oh. What's going on there? Hmm. Alright. So you can't make it more than Never mind, sorry. Yeah, before 
was working. I just couldn't see it. It was hard to tell. Yeah, see. They're all bouncing out of the <laughs> into outer space. So you wouldn't want to make it that high. Um, for this project, it was probably good where it was, like about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. We're going to keep it at that for now. And you may want to increase the friction a little bit, just so the hailstones don't roll once they hit. Alright, and you can also change the stickiness. But, now, we're just going to add a little wind into our scene, which is pretty neat. But before I do that, I'm just going to show you how to change the um, particle size to make it more randomized. Now, under particle size, you have the radius scale. And this, this little option here will change the um, size from whatever you choose to, from the maximum size you choose to the minimum. So, you wouldn't want to make them that small, but that seems pretty good right now. You can change that and change the maximum value to the minimum value. And look how it changed on the grid here. Alright, now I'm going to show you a little bit about the Nucleus node. Now in order to access the Nucleus node, you have to go into your Attribute Editor and click on Nucleus 1. And what you can do in the Nucleus Editor is change the gravity, air density, wind speed, etc. But for now, we're just going to show. I'm just going to show you what gra changing the gravity does. Now, if you make it a higher gravity, that the object will go a lot faster. See. Um, and if you make it lower than 9.8, the default value, the objects are going to act like they're in outer space or under the moon. On the moon, sorry. Or underwater, for instance. Kind of looks like bubbles. Alright, so for now, since we're working with a normal environment on ground, we're going to select it to the default of 9.8. Alright, now, we can make it look more like a storm or something by changing the um, wind speed, in fact. Can move that up a little. Now that looks pretty good. You can see how they're all going towards the X axis. Now you can also change which way you want the direction going by going to the options here. Alright, now I'm having it going in the X and Y direction of one. And if you forget which way, um, which axis is which, you can see right in the corner here, there's a little reminder. Alright, so it's basically all I wanted to show you about and particles and emitting from an object. So you can go ahead and try that out yourself. Any suggestions or comments, you may leave for me. And that's pretty much all. Thanks.